What's up guys? I'm Uncle Vince and today we are building the band car Where all the bands in the early 2000s were driving. We're basically just building a 90s minivan kind of like a I think it's a second generation Chrysler Town and Country and it's called the Falcon Redwood because uh, the last time I made our car called the Redwood it was in the 70s. Yes, it's in the 70s and it was a wagon and because wagons started dying out in the late 80s even though uh, GM was just like, yeah, keep making gigantic fucking wagons. But uh, all the other companies were like, yo, we need to make minivans. So, you know, Ford Aerostar, Town & Country, Grand Caravan, stuff like that. And even like uh, imports were started showing up like the, the Toyota Previa. And also the Sienna, I think, was after the Previa. I don't know, but that's, I don't know about minivans, man. I just know they're boring. Anyway... I don't know how to build a minivan either, so I'm going to kind of wing this right here. I'm going to say it's street is steel, and it could either be a light truck monocoque or just a straight up monocoque. I'm going to say this is just built off of like a sedan. It's built off of like a sedan. I'm just going to say that. So it's going to be monocoque and then galvanized steel. I mean, this is an American company in the early 90s. They weren't using a corrosion resistant steel. That thing, that, that, oh, this is rusting. This is completely rusting out. And I think I'm going to go with like a uh, semi-trailing arm, maybe. I'm actually not sure. It kind of needs like comfort and load capacity, but I don't really know what else would do comfort and load capacity. I mean, I think this is like the best one. Oh, wait, the wishbone? Eh, eh, eh. semi-trailing arm. I kind of see it happening. That's also kind of for like smaller vehicles, so I don't know. If I do it wrong, let me know. We're gonna we're gonna have to name this. I'm gonna start naming my engines. We're gonna have to name this shit like Toledo, to to Toledo, Toledo, Toledo. <laughs> sure, Toledo, Toledo, I Toledo. Okay, Told Toledo, Toledo, the Toledo. 3-7. It's the Toledo 3-7. And it's just gonna be NA. Because, you know, it's naturally aspirated. We're not putting a turbo on this thing. We're making a V6. Cast. Direct acting overhead cam. Or, honestly, it could have been push rod. I, you know, you never know of these kind of things. And it's gonna be a 3.7. That's a little bit too big. Actually, we could make a little... Watch. We can do this. We could tell all the people... Oh, look, your your engine, it's economical. It's a 3.7, but then like one click and it's a 3.8. That seems like a very American thing to go to, go, to do. Yes, that's going to be cast, cast, and cast. I'm not going to touch any of this. No variable valve timing, no turbocharger. Um, ooh, injection. How about this like straight up single point EFI and single and then like a standard. Or maybe we can just like straight up go mechanical fuel injection per cylinder. Yeah, single point EFI, sure. And it's gonna run on premium because we're not running on that shitty gas. Like, actually, 90s, eh, yeah, running on premium. I mean, this is kind of supposed to be like a slightly budget car. So, I mean, we don't need to make. Since our engine's like bigger than most of them, I think, so we could probably run on regular and still get like enough power. And because the engine is bigger, it's more thermally efficient. Not fuel efficient, thermally efficient. And then it's going to have all of this reverse flow and reverse flow because minivan, you know, real estate agent moms that are sad because they have four kids. Um, yeah, that they're, they're driving this car and they want some peace and quiet after they drop their kids off at school and they're going on the work and their work day is going to be complete shit. So then they got to have at least a tiny bit of a uh, quietness. So that's nice. Uh, headers and stuff. They're limiting airflow and we have 142.4 horsepower. Nice. I kind of want like 100 and like 40. We don't need any more than that. Like at all. We're going to have like a 4 speed and the 4 is like an overdrive. So this thing is not going to be fast in the slightest. Um, Headers. Short cast. Whoa. Look at them headers, bro. Oh yeah, these are like not headers that you would see in a car like made after like 
the 60s, so this is more accurate. Okay. Cool. 160 horsepower. Oh my god. That's too much horsepower. Karen's gonna crash on the highway. There, 144. Just lowered the cam profile. Alright, cool. It's looking all good to me. I uh, can't up that much. All right, cool. There's your engine. And now we're going to have to pick this one. The town and country caravan, whatever it is. I put a picture on the screen of like what I'm going to do with this car. I think everybody can already guess. This is called the Redwood. And the last time I made a car called the Redwood, it had wood panels. And if you would guess I'm doing that again, you're right. There we go. Four speed. No, I'm going to say it can go... I'm going to, like, top... It's going to top out, like, 90. It, it really wouldn't realistically go faster. Open diff. Ooh, radio or... And hard long life tires. Yeah, those tires look about right. And then saw disc in the front and a drum in the back in the 90s. Because this thing has to be cheap. And it's made by, like... An American company in the 90s. I mean, it was like designed in like the late ish 80s. Like, I'm gonna say this car was like finished with being designed in like 19, like 89. And this is like one, of, this is like the the fifth year of it being built. So, yes, we need all the seats, all of the seats. And then it's gonna be a basic, basic. Actually, we can go with like a standard cassette. Actually, no, it's just a plastic dash with, like, a head unit and, like, some vents or something. And then the best power steering you can get, you don't need trash control. You're not going to use it. It's too slow for that. I said this probably going to, like, not be able to go around corners because you're just going to, like, flop over or something. And then we're going to go with standard 80s since I said it was designed in the 80s or late-ish 80s, like 1989. Um, and like standard springs, all this, we'll go with adaptive dampers, whoa, or gas mile tube actually. And then we're going to go with kind of like a comfort, normal utility type thing, but I'm just going to go with normal right now and see what we got going on here. We got issues with wheel spin, what the heck? How do we got issues with wheel spin, dude? Uh, uh, hello? Come on, get like, come on, get like an entire... Overdrive, yep. Oh my god, first gear goes up to 50? We can't have that. That's not that's not good at all. Okay, there we go. The fourth gear is overdrive completely. And it's limited to 80. No, no. So this is limited to like 112. Good luck getting there. You're not gonna get there. You are not going to get to 112. I'm telling you that right now. Nice. Okay. Um, First gear still goes up to 40. Maybe it should only go up to like 20. Okay, now it's even worse. Right, 45, 44, 41, 35. 93% wheel spin though. That's kind of crazy how are you wheel spinning this thing i do not understand in the slightest actually how you spin the wheels that much in a minivan from the 90s okay uh, handles to handling is understeer okay people buying this don't know what understeer is anyways i'm gonna go design this and i'll be right back cue the music and i'll be right back i already said that Time to go turn on some music.
here we are. With, I keep saying all right. Why do I keep saying all right? That's like my go-to transition word. Anyways, this is the 1994 Falcon Redwood SE with the Toledo Free 7 naturally aspirated 144 horsepower V6 with front wheel drive and basically a free speed because four speed is just like, oh, oh, I just not in there. Hey, you can't do that. Get out of my window. <laughs> uh, the rear bench seat was in the window. That was not good. Anyways, yeah, um, front, I, I don't know. It looks all right. Side, sure. And then uh, back, okay. I got this little like, uh, I'm just gonna say this is a rust hole. This is a rust hole from the factory, yes. That's what that is. Hey, what is this? What are you? Get, get out of my wheel. Get out of my wheel. Don't be in my wheel like that, man. Stop it. There we go. Jeez. The nerve of some fixtures, man. I'm serious. All right. I'll see you guys over in BeamNG. I said all right again. Crap. Um, I'll see you guys in BeamNG. And here we are in BeamNG. And I don't actually know why I started on the highway. It's not like we're going to be going very fast. But uh, this car actually looks really good in Beam. Surprisingly, with the way I did the paneling, it looks alright. And the back looks better than it does in automation. Other than, oh my god, I just noticed the seats are off, off like, filter. Okay, whatever. Don't look at that. Anyways, let's start it up. Wait, what the heck? We have a hole in the exhaust? Look at that, we have a hole in the exhaust. We got like, we got exhaust fumes coming out from the front and the back. Okay, that's weird. Okay, let's go. It's not, it's actually not, that's, it's actually not that slow. It's actually relatively fast, what the heck. We're going a hundred. We're already going past our limited top speed, so I don't know what's going on here. We're going like 120. I would not want to go 120 in this rectangle. Not a good idea. We're almost 100. We're almost going 130. A lot of like sportier cars from the early 90s couldn't go this fast. That is weird. Oh, the brakes are like non-existent. She's actually better than you would expect since we were just going 130 a second ago. This van is actually like weirdly fast. I was expecting it to be like horribly slow. Let's do like a little handbrake. God, drop my controller. That wasn't good. How about uh donuts? It's front wheel drive, so no donuts here. How about reverse reverse donuts? Yes. The brakes can't even hold it. Okay. Man, kids in the late 2000s will get this at their first car, and the first thing they'll do is do a front wheel drive burnout. Or oh, wait, can wait, hold on. Why are the flashers turn on? Can we do a nice? Nice. That's weird. Okay, let's take this to the track. And, uh... Watch it actually do, like, the fastest lap somehow. That'd be kind of weird. Okay, see you guys in a sec. And here we are! On the racetrack, and this is probably a really weird sight. At a racetrack. A completely stock 90s uh, minivan. Okay, let's go. 
Put that thing in the drive. All right, let's go. I can just like floor it. Well, they weren't lying about understeer and automation. There's definitely a lot of understeer going on here. And the, the brakes are actually better than like I thought they were. Not too bad. Yeah, the understeer is definitely a problem, but I mean, this van is definitely not made to be on a racetrack. Like the fastest you're ever going to be turning this is like 25 miles an hour, like dropping your kids off at school. See, that understeer is really bad. Like we're I settle right again. And we win. We're only like ten seconds slower than like the fastest car in the world. That is weird. Okay. Until next time. I'm Uncle Vince. I'll see you guys later.